Hello everybody, my name is Eric. Now we've done a lot of videos about how much malware can you get from YouTube with various search queries. So now we're going to take a look how much malware can we get from GitHub. We're going to check it out and then we're going to download it and then we're going to throw it on our sponsor Anyrun Sandbox to go deep into it. So first of all, this is the latest updated one and we can see an interesting trick here. This is commit spam and this is actually just updating a date. Now, why would they do that, you might be wondering. Well, it's so that the actual change log, because this isn't a download link spam, this is a malicious project. So it's so you can't easily go through, because inevitably the malicious payload has to be uploaded every so often. So that's the idea of why. And we can see the real... Now this is supposedly a League of Legends cheat. Very unlikely you're going to find a working League of Legends cheat that's open source, given that game uses Vanguard, which is one of the most effective anti-cheats in the business. So what's the trick here? Pre-build event, command, echo off. Now, using HTML decoder, we can actually turn this into something usable, and I have actually saved this so that we can run it on the sandbox. But first of all, let's look at some more. So we got 5M external, 34 seconds ago. What do we got going on here? Seems like there's nothing yet to download. They, they don't encourage cheating, they're just shipping malicious cheats. Undetected. Well, it seems legit to me. There's nothing in here but a markdown source file. So we'll leave that one out. And they did something interesting with this one, and this is a common uh, red flag, is when you find the payload being stored in the GitHub repository as a zip. Only thing that should be in a GitHub repository is code, not zip files that contain executables. That's not code. Now let's try some other, other hits. Now we often find fun stuff when we search for Roblox. So let's look and see at the latest Roblox. Now here's one that looks pretty obvious. It seems like whoever AI generated this repository did not know that a Roblox executor executes scripts in roblox it doesn't execute roblox so <laughs> yeah this is blatantly ai generated could still be real but i i would doubt it and they've got the exact same setup as the other one where it lives in a folder on the github here we've got another similar looking payload that's also completely 100 vibe generated Okay, so they went from using releases, so maybe there's a detection change there. And some of these look like they're not ready yet. So these guys, uh, they've uploaded the first stage, and then they're going to upload the real model. Now, if it says best, that means it's best. And see, they've done it again. So let's take a look at some of our collection now. Let's see, was this all just some strangely named, totally legit software? So first of all, I think we'll go with the one that, that had real source code. Now, in order to save time, I've extracted the build script, so we're going to upload this. Now here we have the setup on any run who have sponsored this video. Now we can use this. This allows it to stream like, like it was running locally, but this is a fully cloud-based system, so we don't have to set up any VMs. We can choose the duration we want. We can choose if we want any uh, advanced tools. MITM proxy can often be interesting. We can choose... Now I'm going to make it public so that you can follow along. I'll actually have links to each run in the description so you can see everything, but... Uh, course, if you have a paid account, you can do it private or only to your team or only to those who have a link. And we're going to use the automated interactivity, which is designed to make automated malware analysis easier. So what this will do, uh, it'll automatically, if there's anything that needs to be run, it will use machine learning and AI to automatically run it. Click through things and get it going. And here we go. It's now running. It's going to do everything we need. And we can immediately see some activity that doesn't quite look right. So we created a PowerShell script that then remotely downloads and executes commands. And now we can see a whole horde and it automatically attracts this out. And there's actually something even cooler in here. It's called script tracer. So we'll go through and we can see, okay, what's going on here? What are you up to? We got this chunky base 64 that gets decoded. It's not to see all right. 7-zip. And for whatever reason, these malware always like to call it 7-zip with the letters 7. And this is the real 7-zip. So it downloads 7-zip and it's going to use that to extract something. 
We got a bunch of flags. Now we got a pretty solid idea. This is not something you want to run. You get a suspicious PowerShell flag and the way this is dropped. Okay, so let's take a look at the other ones. I'm kind of interested in those zip file. What's undetected Rust cheat 1.4.6 alpha 4? That one's actually the most legit looking of the lot. Not that I think it's legit. Reason it's the most legit looking is because it has a version number. But I, I don't think this one's legit. What? Oh, this one must just have had a readme in it. Okay. Well, I wouldn't call it legit, but okay, this one this one was a bit of a dud. So let's try the rest. Let's try the Call of Duty one. Now, just like run our own computer, we can just do this and we click launch. And then we see, okay. What's happening? And something I appreciate on, on any run, uh, in order to make it more difficult for you to falsely get something tagged, uh, they do show that you manually executed it. Now, in this case, that's just dragging out of a zip. Let's see what this one did. We can see something I don't like to see. IPAPI.com. And now I'm curious. So let's try running this, because one of the things you can do is we get a residential proxy option, because I have a suspicion that this is checking if our IP address is good. So we're going to try this again with the residential proxy. The nice thing is, this is using a residential proxy, but it's not running on my local computer, so I'm not using my residential IP address. You never know what they might do with your IP address. You know, some of these things will run port scans or DDoSs that can potentially track... Oh, now you see how that is still running, right? You saw how it instantly terminated when we tried that with the data center IP, but now uh, we are not terminating. It's not immediately. And here we can actually see the Lua source code, and it is packed. It's kind of, we got some string encoding going on here. Let's take a look at some of the other hits we got. We get a flag of suspicious activity. So let's see what Roblox Fi does. That one kind of reminds me of that Nintendify scam we looked at. It's not explicit, it's just, it doesn't explicitly call itself out to be a cheat or anything, but it's some sort of game tool. Just one of the better ways, uh, you can search those kind of things on any site and you will find malware. And this thing looks identical. Except that it's got model STL, which is purportedly a 3D file. We're going to try this with a different IP address. Let's try some of these other ones. Let's just see, are they all the same or are they something else? You know, let's run it. And then we see a second API hit. And here we've got what looks to be a command and control server. Now, what are we seeing here? I'm looking for magic like uh, a PK, which would imply a zip. Let's check. We got, and it seems to have exfiltrated our files. This is a post request. Now, let's see if anything else has happened with this uh, C2 server. Now, this thing runs really quickly. So the first thing it does, it's IP API, and it gets a response. Now I'm curious, do we hit the C2 server? Because it's weird, because it's hitting the C... This was with uh, the non-resident. So now let's try with the residential. I'm going to give us this response, because this is a uh, residential IP that's being used now. And let's see, does that lead to anything? So we send that, and it gets a big response. Error blocked. And here you can see it exfiltrating every file it can find. Now something else we can do, uh, depending on the nature of the malware, is we can also try an older... Uh, or newer operating system if you want to see other see but behavior changes sometimes when you try an old version of windows you can kind of glitch things out and when you try it, some things will require a newer version so it's useful to have a, a collection of options and this time we get a list of loader and tasks uh, which gives it more instructions for what to do and it downloads more malware and that then so you see how we got different apis here so this was the this was the first run, and then this one sends some small piece of data, which then gets a response. And interestingly, these look to be base64 coded, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to make a lot of sense. And here is a massive info stealer payload. We can also see that it's creating a bunch of tasks on task scheduler uh, that will run these. It's installing into app data. And it's pretending this is a Microsoft Edge update, which is a typical red flag. And it also reruns the core malware. At this point, the initial run of the malware has finished, but that doesn't mean we're any 
say for now, we can go here manually and run these. Of course, no, this is a Windows 7 VM, right? Microsoft Edge came into existence with Windows 10. Let me get these two separate. Wait, do we actually have Microsoft? Wait, we actually have Microsoft Edge on this VM. I didn't even know you could do that. And now we get the full perspective by trying this multiple times. We see that through a combination of the system information and the IP address, it determines whether to run more tasks. And then it runs this task every day, it gives it more information. Now, we can always try and see whether we can base64 decode this. My guess, I actually don't know. So we've now got what looks to be that. Oh, that's interesting. So that's hex strings. Now we can use Cyberchef. We might actually be able to get. Okay, yeah, I don't know what that would be, uh, but let's try the other one as well. We can go. It, it may not mean anything other than this also looks like some sort of binary. Oh, I copied. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. It is so weird. So the that then becomes hex. Then we can go. Okay. Let me turn this one off, and we can turn this one on. Then we end up with something that doesn't really make sense. So it's it's some sort of code or potential, but it, it doesn't mean anything outside of that. Then we also have this exe, which I am guessing is just lua.exe being renamed. We can also see that it downloads some of its payload uh, from GitHub. We might be able to see a bit more if we turn on MITM proxy. And here we can see the next step in the payload. So this is actually, that's ironic, in a video about malware on GitHub, where it's pulling more malware from GitHub. And we see this same trend of this hexadecimal, but I'm curious to see. Oh, well, there's a few things. This could either be an exe, uh, although it can't with that uh, prefix because it doesn't have the right, but some sort of binary file. And then we pull another file, which is still using... I'm guessing it's compressed or encrypted, just purely uh, going off of uh, the lack of a magic. You can see some of the files it's creating. This was written by, we can see what it did there. So it calls this, then it uses that to go there. So we were able to get through that. So the ultimate question, is there a lot of malware on GitHub? Well, yes, if you search for the usual sub suspects, yes. If you are careful with what you search for, and check it out, take advantage of the fact that GitHub is somewhat of a social network and you can get an idea of what people generally post, then it's not as much of a minefield. So that is going to be all for me for now. I, I'm just going to tell you a bit. I'm sure you, if you watch my channel, you know all about any ROM, but we'll just go over. It's a great uh, cloud-based sandbox. It can save you a lot of time doing malware analysis. Here are the plans. For free, you can get started with your business email, the link in the description below. Uh, we can see you get a lot of stuff just for free for non-commercial use. And then when you want to level up, you've got the, you can get the hunter plan, which is what I have. And you get a lot more stuff with that. You can get private analysis. You can get, you get video recordings, MITM proxy, which we showed you, you know, that can be really useful. You get a big diversity of operating systems to choose from. You monitor system processes, and you get some other, you get some additional features. The residential proxy as well, if you're dealing with malware, or even if you don't have a specific, you don't know the sample, maybe you just want to see, does it behave differently when it thinks it's in the data center? Because malware is increasingly, because sandboxes are becoming such a key part of malware research, malware is trying to beat it. Residential proxies help you stay ahead. So that is going to be all from me for now. Please do let me know what you thought about this video or anything malware related in the comments below. Check anyone out, links in the description. Bye.